If you're a Disney fan, you probably already know that Splash Mountain, whose theme is based on the racially problematic movie Song of the South, is going to be transformed into a new attraction called Kiana's Bayou Adventure, based on the characters from the film Princess and the Frog. In this video, I'm going to explore four questions. What problems does Tiana's attraction solve? How did Disney get to this point? Setting any racial issues aside, is Tiana's Bayou Adventure a better fit than Splash Mountain? And finally, what is the situation for Splash Mountain in Walt Disney World and Tokyo Disneyland. Splash Mountain is themed after the animated sequences from the 1946 movie Song of the South, a film that has always been problematic for Disney due to its controversial depiction of African Americans. It's a movie based on the Uncle Remus stories, using a mixture of animation and live action that takes place in Georgia during the Reconstruction Era, a time period in the United States just after the abolition of slavery, after the end of the American Civil War. Way back in 1947, the NAACP ticketed the movie and released a statement condemning the film for the way it perpetuates a dangerously glorified picture of slavery and gives the impression of an idyllic master-slave relationship, which is a distortion of the facts. The controversy over Splash Mountain is nothing new. The film it was based on had trouble with the public right from the start. Song of the South was last released in theaters in 1986 and has virtually disappeared ever since. It has never received a home media release in the United States and can only be found overseas. Former Disney CEO Bob Iger has commented that Song of the South is not appropriate in today's world. So based on these facts, don't expect Song of the South to ever be released on Disney Plus or to surface in any format in the United States again. As you can see, the controversy surrounding Song of the South has been an issue since the 1940s. Even in 1989, when the first log went over Chickapin Hill at Disneyland, the theme of Splash Mountain was already contentious. While I'm no expert on the Reconstruction era, I can take issue with the land Disneyland Splash Mountain finds itself in, Critter Country. The land of Critter Country has always seemed like a weak thing to me. While I love the attraction Splash Mountain, I've always felt that Critter Country seems to have an identity crisis. It feels as though Disney felt that Bear Country had to lose its focus on bears to accommodate Splash Mountain without ever gaining its own identity in any meaningful way. Tiana's Bayou Adventure gives Disneyland the perfect opportunity to make this land a cohesive bayou themed extension of New Orleans Square. But first, First, let's take a look. How did Disney get here? Long before Critter Country, this area of the park was very different. Disneyland opened in 1955 during the golden age of the Western. Films about cowboys and Native Americans, known at the time as American Indians, were extremely popular, and so Disneyland's Frontierland was expanded in 1956 to include an area called Indian Village, where Native Americans provided entertainment, sharing their indigenous cultures. And after the show, you could hop onto one of the Indian War canoes, staffed whenever possible by Native American cast members. Meanwhile in New York, the 1964 World's Fair featured Progress Land, an exhibit sponsored by General Electric, which was the inspiration for the Carousel of Progress. After success in New York, Progress Land moved to Disneyland in 1967 and became Carousel of Progress, where it called Disneyland its home until 1973. The Carousel of Progress is an audio animatronic show in a carousel theater with an outer ring of six audio that after each act rotates around four different scenes, each on a stationary stage. In addition to the four scenes, each with its own room, there is a room for loading and another for unloading. The show chronicles an American family throughout four different decades as they observe technological advances in their home. Walt Disney World opened its Magic Kingdom in Florida in 1971. Needing more attractions, the Carousel of Progress moved to the Florida property, opening in their Magic Kingdom in 1975. As you can see from the New York World's Fair, Walt Disney brainstormed creative ideas beyond the Disney theme parks. In 1966, Walt Disney Productions announced plans for Disney's Mineral King Ski Resort in an area that is now part of Sequoia National Park. Walt Disney originally intended for an audio animatronic show of singing bears to be a feature of the ski resort. 
The plans for the ski resort were eventually canceled due to opposition from preservationists. But Disney held on to the idea of a Bear Band show. On October 1st, 1971, an East Coast version of Disneyland called the Magic Kingdom opened its gates. And the idea for a bear show finally found a home in Florida's Frontierland as the Country Bear Jamboree, an opening day Walt Disney World attraction. The Country Bear Jamboree was so successful in Florida that plans were immediately made to open a California version which opened at Disneyland on March 4, 1972, with two theaters, doubling the capacity of its Florida counterpart. As noted in my video, History of the Sexes at Disneyland, Disneyland's Country Bear Jamboree was originally operated by an all-female crew and was sponsored by Wonder Bread from 1975 to 1995. The Country Bears expanded their repertoire in 1984 with the Country Bear Christmas Special and in 1986 with the Country Bear Vacation Hoedown. Same bears, but all new songs. This is me on a break during a shift when I worked at the Country Bear Playhouse. I worked on attractions all throughout the park during my 10 years of being a cast member and the Country Bears always made an easy day of work. The Country Bear Playhouse closed down in 2001. I was there as a guest the very last night. It was the first time in years that the Country Bears had a long line of people waiting in line to clap their hands and stomp their feet one last time. That same year, Disney's California Adventure opened, and there was a rumor circulating that the Country Bears might find a new home, adding life to the Grizzly River Run, a water raft ride at the new park with few show elements. This never came to pass. But in 2002, a movie titled The Country Bears was released in theaters based on the attraction and its characters. It was a weird movie and a weird decision, as Disneyland had already closed its Country Bears attraction. Of course, Zeke and Zeb and Ted and Fred and a bar named Tennessee are still going strong in Western Land in Tokyo Disneyland and Frontierland in the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. Unlike Tokyo and Florida, the Country Bear Jamboree in California had its own dedicated land. The Indian Village, a part of Frontierland, became its own distinct land separate from Frontierland called Bear Country on March 25, 1972. Bear Country was located in the northwest corner of the park and appropriately was themed to the great northwest of the United States, focusing in on its versed inhabitants. If you were hungry as a bear in 72, the Golden Bear Lodge served food food and refreshments in bear country, later renamed the Hungry Bear Restaurant in 1977. In those early days, the Mike Fink heel boats stopped right below the restaurant for a new group of explorers to board the Gully Wumper and the Bertha May. The keel boat landing was later moved next to the rafts to Tom Sawyer's Island until it closed down in 1997. Next door, the Indian War canoes became Davy Crockett's Explorer canoes. If you're only as hungry as a cub, then the Mile Long Bar was the spot for you. A snack bar that seemed a mile long because there were infinity mirrors on each side of the bar, making it look like it went on for a mile. A great place to hang out, at least Max Buff and Melvin thought so. Rounding out bear country was Teddy Bear's Swingin' Arcade and two shops, Wilderness Outpost and Indian Trading Post. The latter, a remnant from the area's Indian village day that stayed in bear country until 1989. As the years marched on, a disadvantage of bear country was that there was not much to draw guests back there. From a guest circulation standpoint, bear country was a dead end, and it was especially dead at night. This is in contrast to the busy land of Tomorrowland, where the vacating of the Carousel Theater in California enabled the Imagineers at Wed Enterprises, as Walt Disney Imagineering was known until 86, to open America Sings in 1974, in anticipation of America's bicentennial celebration in 1976. Like Carousel of Progress, America Sings was an audio animatronic show in the Carousel Theater. Unlike its predecessor, America Sings starred audio animatronic personified animals that told the story of American music by singing classic songs from four different eras of American musical history. In 1986, in anticipation of the closure of America Sings, two geese audio animatronics were taken out of America Sings and moved to the brand new Star Tours queue. Their skin and feathers were removed to transform them into G2 droids. I worked on Star Tours during its second summer and we all called them geese droids. In 2000, in 2011, Star Tours was updated to become Star Tours The Adventure Continues, and one of the geese droids, G290, now sings a modified version of I've Been Working on the Railroad, I've Been Looking at the Same Bag, as a throwback to America Sings.
Netflix. I was fortunate enough to be in the audience of the last performance of America Sings on April 10th, 1988. Since the final show happened late on a Sunday night, and the vast majority of the audience was a mix of us cast members and annual pass holders, it felt a little more like a midnight showing of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, with guests shouting out call-outs to the AA figures and everyone singing along. After that Sunday night, the Carousel Theater was closed with a sign that read, Sorry, we're closed to Imagineer a brand new attraction. That sign always made me think that they didn't really know what to do with the empty Carousel Theater. It housed the highest capacity attraction in the entire park, so the building was especially valuable. After a 10-year hiatus, the building was finally reopened as Innoventions as part of the new Tomorrowland in 1998. The majority of the audio animatronic figures from America Sings found a second career singing in Splash Mountain. In fact, the vast majority of the Splash Mountain AA figures beyond the Song of the South characters, Br'er Bear, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Rabbit, are transplants from America Sings. Although log rides were commonplace in theme parks, Disney wanted their log ride, Splash Mountain, to be unique and special. In 1989, it stood out amongst log rides across the country. After the signature big drop, rather than the ride ending, your log flows back into the show building for a big finale scene. I was fortunate enough to work on the opening crew of Splash Mountain. In fact, I even got to operate the attraction during the test and adjust phase, well before opening day. So I have great fondness for the ride. Although Splash Mountain does have bears, namely Br'er Bear, it also has a menagerie of various animals. Splash Mountain's lack of focus on bears required that the bear country theme of the land evolve. Hence, bear country became Critter Country. In order for Critter Country to merit its name, it was important that the bear theming be de-emphasized. For example, Bear Country staple, Mile Long Bar, became Brer Bar to complement Splash Mountain, and name changes took place for all the shops. The theme of Critter Country was problematic right from the start. Splash Mountain with a deep south theme was sitting directly across from the Country Bear Playhouse with a great northwest theme. Replacing Country Bear Playhouse with the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh in 2003 made matters worse. Since Winnie the Pooh takes place in the Hundred Acre Woods, a fictional forest across the pond in England. What is the theme of Critter Country? I don't know. In my opinion, I don't think Disney knows either. I think we've all overlooked weak theming because the land has a pleasant atmosphere and we all love Splash Mountain. Despite Bear Country having a stronger theme than Critter Country, Critter Country enjoys what Bear Country never had, a thrill ride that draws people to the area even at night. In 2019, with the opening of Galaxy's Edge, Critter Country is no longer a dead end, a goal that the Disney showcase on Main Street in the 1980s had us anticipating would be met by the never materialized lands of Discovery Bay and Dumbo Circus. The long-awaited goal of guests being able to circulate all the way around the rivers of America is now reality. This is how we got here. But what about the future of Critter Country? How might Tiana's Bayou Adventure replacing Splash Mountain be the perfect solution for Critter Country's weak theme? To understand how Tiana's Bayou Adventure might be a better fit for the west side of Disneyland, first we need to look at the film the attraction is based on. After computer-generated animated films with more of a three-dimensional look dominated the late 2000s with films such as Cars, Ratatouille, and Up, the 2009 release, Princess and the Frog, was a nostalgic return to traditional animation with more of a two-dimensional look. Princess and the Frog is a uniquely American story with strong representation of Black American characters. The story takes place in New Orleans, which lends itself perfectly to New Orleans Square. The new attraction will be called Tiana's Bayou Adventure and will take place after the events of the film around 1927. The ride storyline goes like this. With the success of Tiana's place, Tiana and Naveen expanded their business beyond the restaurant with Tiana's Foods, whose headquarters is in an old salt mine. To prepare for a large party for Mardi Gras, the journey will take you into the bayou to find a key ingredient for the festivities. Since the bayou theme of the attraction naturally lends itself to New Orleans Square, if Critter Country is renamed and rethemed to a Louisiana bayou, then the land would become a natural extension of New Orleans Square and could solve Critter Country's identity crisis once and for all. This is the perfect opportunity to get rid of the underwhelming Winnie the Pooh ride. There is a huge difference in quality between the Winnie the Pooh attractions in Japan, Florida, and California. The Japanese Pooh ride has gotten outstanding reviews. The Florida version is definitely adequate, 
But the California version leaves me feeling like there's a grumbly in my tummy, but the honey pot is completely empty. Disney is famous for sophisticated audio animatronics, but in the Pooh ride, none of the characters' mouths even move. This attraction opened in 2003, yet in 1985, thousands of kids owned a Teddy Ruxpin doll at home that was better animated than the figures in the Winnie the Pooh ride. While I'm a huge critic of Critter Country's Pooh ride, I would welcome a duplicate of Tokyo Disneyland's Winnie the Pooh in California's Fantasyland. Perhaps the Critter Country Pooh ride could become another ride based on the Princess and the Frog. I'd love to see a ride featuring Louie the Alligator, or perhaps it could become a dark ride based on another Disney film set on a Louisiana bayou, such as The Rescuers. Imagine a Peter Pan's Flight style dark ride flying on an albatross like Bernard and Miss Bianca did in the 1977 animated film. A bayou-themed extension of New Orleans Square goes perfectly with Cajun and Creole delicacies, so the Hungry Bear restaurant could be renamed with a tantalizing new menu. Of course, the shops would also be renamed and rethemed. I would love to see the whole land come alive at nighttime with fireflies. People who already visited the land during the day may very well return to the land at night just to see the spectacle of the fireflies and the beautiful bayou lighting. Up until now, this video has addressed the situation in Disneyland California. But what about the other Splash Mountains? Like its Disneyland counterpart, right from the start, Splash Mountain's theming has been troublesome to the Magic Kingdom in Florida. Unlike Disneyland, Splash Mountain in Florida is situated right across from Big Thunder Mountain Railroad in Frontierland. Frontierland is a land that celebrates the Old West of the 19th century. Splash Mountain, a story of the Deep South, is in direct conflict with the theme of Frontierland. Tiana's Bayou Adventure presumably takes place in Louisiana, which is also not in the Old West. Unlike Disneyland in California, as far as themed lands go, Florida's Splash Mountain being transformed into Tiana's Bayou Adventure is a neutral change since neither attraction truly fits the theme of Walt Disney World's Frontierland. For those of us who wish that we could continue to get wet singing along to zippity doo -dah, Tokyo Disneyland plans to keep its Splash Mountain. The Japanese park is not owned by Disney, but rather the Oriental Land Company. The Japanese, who should be less familiar or invested in American history, are far less likely to associate the scenes of Splash Mountain with its controversial past. Now I want to hear from you. Would you prefer that Disneyland and Walt Disney World keep Splash Mountain or open Tiana's Bayou Adventure? Tell me in the comment section below. While I'm excited at the prospect of Critter Country being transformed into a land that adds to the cohesion of the park overall, and Tiana's Bayou Adventure may very well be a great attraction. As a former cast member who was part of the Splash Mountain opening crew, and a Disney fan myself who grew up with the song Zippity Doo Dah, I'm always going to look back to Splash Mountain with great fondness. Anybody ready for a trip to Japan? I'm Andy the Palm Springs Linguist. If you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button down below. If you're already a subscriber, thank you. Please leave a comment down below, like and share the video, and you can choose from any of these great videos to see next. See you in the next one.